Welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. If you like this video, please subscribe, please share, please comment down below. I'd like all your opinions and everything to do with the World Cup. So yeah, let's get the conversation going. Cool. So today I want to cover the Australian team selection. Michael Cech has done some interesting choices. Played a little with the Ganya rule, but uh, every team in Southern Hemisphere does at the moment, it seems like. So yeah, let's get to it. Obviously, as I said now with the Ganya rule, James O'Connor and... Uh, Nick White really benefited hugely from it. It was, um, it, it, I think it's essential uh, positions though. James O'Connor had a great performance against the All Blacks when they were that record, almost record breaking win a few weeks ago. Um, in my opinion, just because I feel sad for Australia, I'm kind of ignoring the whole um, massive defeat the week after. And it is quite sad. I think that was the greatest opportunity to get the Bladderslow back in that thing. I think it's 19 years since they've last had it. So, yeah, it's, it needs to come back to Australia. I think it's just good for Australian rugby. But obviously, New Zealand shouldn't give it to them. So, congrats to New Zealand for taking it back properly. Yeah, so obviously, um, it's a case of the, the Gitter rule has been interesting. It's been really uh, turning its head more and more. Obviously, Drew Mitchell and Matt Gitter are getting the first opinion of the, the Gitter rule back in the day. And it's now becoming more and more used. And I've, we've discussed this before, many channels have, that obviously more, as more and more Super Rugby uh, uh, is having a hard time pulling and covering the costs of players, players are looking foreign, looking to Europe and looking to Japan to obviously cover fees. And obviously if they can make the money, why not? I mean, there's a short, limited career, they have to. So it's sad to see, but unfortunately something that more and more uh, Southern Hemisphere teams need to take into account, they need to understand and they need to... Uh, bring into their national squads. Unfortunately, you can't be competitive without your best uh, players, so you've got to take that into account and accept that this is going to happen. This is part of the natural order. So yeah, but I mean, obviously, the only, well, um, it, it's it's there's still a squad, stunning squad, a lot of great local talent. I think there was up to five players actually that um, Checo was trying to bring from overseas that ended up only really being two or three, give or take. Uh, after, for example, Will Skelton, they didn't couldn't get all so, uh, organized. Simmons, though, taking that squad, a big fan favorite, so I think uh, it's not a bad thing. He's done. Um, he's had a good season and deserves the spot. Uh, big uh, overall, a, a consistent performance. Uh, overall, the lock players in Australia, they've got some good specialist locks. Um, an interesting idea. Uh, well, a lot of countries are going for like f flat long lock combinations, but obviously Australia is still sticking to it. And I think it's 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 worked for them, so hopefully they can go forward. Um, then obviously Matt Timar actually really benefiting also from uh, the Matt Gitter rule with the fact that he's coming over uh, only really playing five games for the Rebels. It's a little bit of a similar thing as normally you'd have the that it has to he has to join from the beginning of the Super Rugby season. But obviously check it felt he could let it slide. The big question mark in everybody's mind obviously here is David Pocock. Is he going to be ready for the game? Is he uh, tournament? Is he going? To, uh, is injury going to cover? Has had very little game time. No a Wallaby game time this year. Only really a couple of games in Super Rugby, and that is a question mark, a big question mark in everybody in Australia's mind. Especially after uh, Falau um, could no longer take. Well, obviously it's been taken out of the team. Fair enough, and I think it is rightly so. It is just a blow to Australian rugby, as that is definitely something Australian rugby thrives on, is the stars of their team. Hooper as captain, I think, is still good in consistency. I'm happy about that. So, yeah, I think the biggest thing with Australia and the whole team as a whole, I will be showing the team at the end of the video. You can go through in that. But I, I want to just... My biggest thing about the Australian team always is that they definitely... They, they, they are a great set of players and not a great team always. When the set of players, when the top players perform and show, they really perform, they really bring, elevate the team to a whole new level. But until then, they really do, the whole team almost feels flat, feels that they're playing for themselves. There's no like game plan to ensure on, so it can get very jagged. So yeah, that's my, that's my biggest worry on it, is that they need to just understand that it's not about the team, it's about the culture. Something that I feel Michael Checker has really had a bad time doing. He has, he's almost caused, I think, more rifts in the team and something that he needs to really look at going into this World Cup. So I'm hoping they're working at it now in the off period before the World Cup, building this team spirit, building the team quality. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. So please, uh, you'll see the video, you'll see the team squad now up. And yeah, Please comment, like, share, and if you have any things, let me know in the comments below. Thanks, guys.